Pete is checking out the derailleur hanger alignment reference to the wheel. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, five millimeters out of alignment, so that's gonna affect our shifting quality. And now it's time to install the rear derailleur. Yeah, just make sure that little tab is behind the hanger here so it rests against it and then thread it in and we're going to torque it to 10 newton meters. Sweet. With SRAM carbon cranks, you always want to make sure you have a washer on the, on the pedal. So we're going to thread that in and we would torque this to 40 newton meters, but we're not going to torque it yet. It's hard to torque pedals when we don't have a chain on the bike. And we won't install the chain until we can put the front derailleur on. So folks, it's always the small things that derail things in life. And this hand applies for bike builds. Unfortunately, the Ribble CGR SL was not delivered with the hanger mount for the front derailleur. So my mate Pete here is attempting to improvise by taking a hanger from a Cervelo Aspero and modifying it. Otherwise, we'll have to wait for a new one to arrive from the UK. Some old school mechanic stuff. Folks, unfortunately, that little hack did not work because whilst the holes were enlarged, they weren't lined up. So we have to wait for Ribble to send us the front derailleur hanger. We are at Brickyard Bikes. That there is a front derailleur hanger which solves that dilemma. So we're gonna continue with the build. Yes. It's only been a little while, but patience is a virtue. Got some Loctite on these bolts. We don't want this front derailleur coming loose ever. It could ruin your day on a nice long gravel ride. Nice and gentle here. I want to cross thread these bolts. These fasteners use a T25. Personally a big fan of Torx bolts. All right, so we're gonna install this little derailleur and uh, I already installed this wedge. They have three different types of wedges depending on what derailleur you have. This is the wide derailleur. So you get some wider wedges here because you got a much bigger gap between the derailleur and the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-install that. It's kind of a pain in the ass to install that after you've already installed the derailleur. So. And get it get it just tight enough so I can move it around but it's not gonna move without me manipulating it this is a new thing here too this front derailleur guide so this guide is new here I haven't really had any force axis derailleurs I've done a lot of them I haven't seen this guide here but I assume you just fit the chain ring into here into this groove here and it's going to get us into the correct gap. You know, we look like we've got a one to two millimeter gap here between the chain ring and the outer plate. And out of the box, the alignment looks good. You got these little arrows here, these little tick marks on the front end and the back end. The derailleur should be placed in the high position when you're setting up the derailleur. First go around. And then you have this little, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see this. And you've got a little hash mark here. And that's what we traditionally use to set the height on the derailleur. You wanna set the tooth of the outer chain ring right at the lowest point of that hash mark there. Pete's gonna size the chain right now. He loves doing that. I hate using old dirty chains to size a new chain. It's just like, it's disgusting. And there's just, this is just a much more beautiful way of doing it, in my opinion. So, depending if you have a one by or a two by, this is all stated in the user manual for this group set. You're gonna overlap the chain, big ring, big cog in the rear. And then we're gonna add one inner link and one outer link for a two by system. So, one and one. And we're gonna cut it right here. We use black sharpie to mark the link where I'm going to cut it. I'm going to use our special 
Axis Chain Cutter. This is a Park Tool CT 3.3. Not really that special, they just manufactured a new bridge here. Hmm. We'll break the link. Heard that painting pop. Push that link out. Here's the link. Throw it in the trash. There's our extra links. You could keep these if you had a catastrophic failure on the trail and you need to break your chain and add a link. So you're not short any links, you could keep those, but... Well, you can make a necklace. Or you can make a necklace. That's With a, lot a of great trains. fashion choice. Mm-hmm. A gravel cyclist is a, is a trendsetter. Too kind. We try to be here, too, with our Hawaiian shirts and mustaches. And... I am mustache-free, but that's okay. <laughs> we can work on that. So, routing the chain through. This is, seems pretty easy, but there's a little tab in here. Almost all the railers that chain is going to go up and around this guide pulley and it's going to go above that tab and come around the tension pulley a little bit of rear derailleur anatomy guide pulley tension pulley and then we're going to shift the front derailleur into the small ring might even just drape it over away from the small chain ring so we got plenty of chain to work with we're going to install the quick link in the direction of travel. They got a little arrow here. Chain's going to be moving in that direction. We've also got the flat top chain indicator. It's flat on that side. So if you got it on backwards, you should know. It's going to feel a little funky moving through the derailleur. And we can install this two ways. You can use a tool, snap it in place. This little guy, you just pop it in there and snap it in place or we can do it the way without a tool and install the chain I'm gonna rotate it around and hold that rear brake there we go here to pop in place that chain that quick link is set. Just want to make sure that it's definitely snapped in place. It's got, got enough little bit of play there. Chain looks a little sloppy right now because this tension isn't set right yet. Peter's about to install the click shifter. He's removing the port protector. In goes the click shifter into the right. There you go, I heard it snap. So the click shifter sits under the handlebar like that. I'm going to use the Shimano tool to make sure it's properly seated. I believe it is. I see them coming to shop and we have issues with either battery not, not working or shifter not working. It's often just the connection. And you can um, fully expect, you know, either a frayed wire or uh, just a damaged wire yeah. just from and like solution. you mentioned sometimes not enough slack and after time this wiggles and then it pulls away and then the shifter connection is broken that's I've seen right that a few. so that's a very handy place to shift the gears if you'd like to ride the tops of the handlebars like I do just marking the other side of the handlebar for the other click shifter because he's very detail oriented. Man, you gotta get everything symmetrically That's lined right. up. That's right. That's what you want in a mechanic. I'm a rider too and I pay attention to all that little stuff. When I'm riding and something's out of place, it just bugs the <laughs> out of me. <laughs> I'll hold the axis function button on the derailleur till it flashes. And then we will do the front derailleur as well. Little button here on the front side until he flashes fast and that's paired with the rear derailleur and then we do it with the shifters as well you got the little buttons in here do them one at a time they flash rapidly sorry I got that one a little bit quicker let me do that again I guess so you can see the flash here we go fast rapid flash beautiful Rapid flash, and then you just hit the button on the rear derailleur, and then the 
shifting begins. We already have our hanger aligned, aligned so we know that it's going to be a pretty decent adjustment out of the box. We will start by setting gaps on the rear derailleur. I believe this tool probably isn't going to work now that we have a larger cassette. What is this, a 1036? 1036, yeah. So. They were originally designed for 1033, I think, but there might be a special version, maybe? I don't know. We're looking for a five millimeter gap between the upper pulley and the largest cog, this 36 tooth cog on the cassette. So I'm just gonna use a five millimeter Allen key as a feeler gauge. And I'm gonna adjust the gap with the B screw. The B screw. Make sure we got a two and a half millimeter Allen key. And probably gonna fit it from this side. It's kind of hard to see, but. Hard to see where the top of that tooth might be, but I'm just gonna estimate. Close and we'll see how it goes. Initial derailleur adjustment here in the second largest cog from the biggest cog. We're going to try to get that lined up. That's actually easier to see with the chain uninstalled. Uh, so I should have just waited on that. Let really see that. Uh, just going to check the shifting. See if we have any hesitation. Here we have some hesitation. Shifting pretty good so far. Check the high limit here. Turn this inboard. See what we have. And a half millimeter gap between the outer plate and the chain ring. The chain. Let's check the function, make sure it doesn't overshift doesn't hesitate sometimes if it's too far outboard it'll also kind of hesitate to push the chain up but it can overshift as well I don't want to damage your carbon cranks that, that gauge is really nice to really set this derailleur up really nicely I'm gonna go to the low gear in the rear set the low limit is this lower bolt here that's the low limit bolt that's the high limit bolt you try to adjust one while you're in the wrong position it can damage the derailleur we're looking for again like a zero to half a millimeter gap between the chain and the inner plate of the front derailleur check for noise i don't want it to rub while we're in that granny gear Riders hate noise. It's my most common complaint. My bottom bracket's creaky. Something is creaky is making noise. Concerning. Let's check the function here. Make sure it doesn't drop and it doesn't hesitate. And really the best best way to check everything on an ETAP system is to test ride it. I found that I can get everything adjusted here in the stand. And then it's really just not quite right out on the road. I could do my micro adjustments there on the road. But I'm just going to go ahead and set the limits on the rear derailleur to stop the derailleur from sending the chain too far. And we just turn this limit screw in until it just lightly contacts the derailleur. And then we 
gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna turn this in until it just hits the tab on the rear derailleur. Bam. And that's gonna protect our frame from the chain overshift wheel. Take that high limit again on the front trailer. And some tick 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 tick. Right there. Checking for noise or any hesitation. shifter position torque the shifters I always measure uh, from the bottom of the shifter to the bar end there's nothing more frustrating than shifters that are misaligned now Pete's probably going to detect my dodgy method because earlier in the video I took the bars and placed them on the ground with the shifter so I got them pretty close is in perpendicular or parallel I should say to this part of the handlebar so he's probably going to detect my floor it might be out by a couple of millimeters <laughs> I think we are. don't forget Peter's a professional mechanic I am not I missed the the fun part which is plugging the plugging the bar in but trying to get the edge here nice and smooth and get that bulge and getting that logo aligned Hey, that's very neat. There's no bulge there with excess tape like All I details. have. Details. This is really nice tape to wrap. It's it makes it easy. You've got a nice. Uh, you got this logo here, and that's going to give you that kind of the proper overlap here. One of the the most important things about wrapping tape. You can do it a number of ways, and some mechanics say they do it the, this way is the right way, and that way is the right way. And there's a lot of interpretation to it, but the most important things, fundamentals, I believe are wrapping from the bottom to the top. Uh, so then on the top, so you don't have that edge, this edge here on, on your hands. And having a nice even gap between each wrap and we have good tension. So I'm just holding this under tension as I'm going up. And it takes a lot of practice to get comfortable with it. I used to hate wrapping bar tape when I started working on my own bike five, six years ago. Now it's one of my favorite things to do because I do it almost on a daily basis. So as we come up the bar, the wrap, the gap, or the wrap is gonna get tighter as we get a shorter radius. This bend with the bar, got the cheater tape there. It's kind of hard to hold in place sometimes, but we're just gonna need to hold it when we get to that point. You can do a figure, we were just talking about this, you can do a figure eight or use this cheater tape, little strip of tape. I like doing it this way because it reduces kind of bulkiness around the shifter. Some people like it thicker, so I just I prefer to ask before and wrap the bars. I'll put this guy in there. Tram shifters are a little funky with this cheater tape. That you've got to kind of stick the tape a little bit lower on the outside and a little bit higher on the inside to cover the gaps. So what you don't want to see also is any gaps around the shifter. Let me bring the tape around. Holding this nice and tight. Up and around. So I'm 
got a little bit of a bulge there. That'll that'll get hidden by the hood. So coming around. I was trying to gauge, see how much tape I have here to wrap around this blip here, or click, whatever they call it. I think I'm gonna have enough tape to finish that job. So right uh, now, Pete is cutting a hole in the final piece of tape to go around the click shifter. This is a very delicate operation. So I tried cutting a piece of cheater tape into it, but it's just... So I'm gonna get the right width here. He's measuring it precisely. Because if you mess this up, you might mess up the rest of the tape and a mm, bit too short on the tape to finish off the end of the handlebar. Yeah, it just wasn't going to be as clean as I thought it was going to be. Pete's handiwork is supreme. Look at that. Perfect hole cut. And now he can finish off the bar wrap without resorting to any funky measures. Excellent, Pete. Just using electrical tape. Tape off the finishing edge here. Keep it nice and tight so this tape doesn't come unwrapped. Again, but he's got a different opinion on how to finish bar tape or wrap bar tape. I usually use a layer of bar tape. Wrapping in the same direction of the tape. All right, we're all done. Nice even gap here between the stem and the bar tape. John just likes to use black electrical tape to finish off the tape. Sometimes you can use that finishing tape, logoed finishing tape, but just not really a fan of sometimes it doesn't leave a, it leaves kind of a crinkled edge. So it just, Plain black electrical tape. A couple layers, keeps it nice and tight, keeps it from unraveling, and we're good. Pete, yeah. thanks so much for your time with this build, man. I really appreciate it. And folks, if you're in Columbus, Georgia, we're actually in Phoenix City right now, just across the border in Alabama, you need to come by Brickyard Bicycle Shop. Pete's the mechanic here, and also the very friendly sales staff. They will help you out.